Hey friends, welcome back. Hope you're all well rested after that gauntlet last week. That sure was a lot of moles to pass tense. And come to think about it, the only purpose of the fight was to save the Runaway Five. At this point, it's really a fairly one-sided relationship. That'll change eventually, so don't worry. This round, we have one of our first strategy shifting bosses. Normally, we can fall back on Paula's PSI abilities, but this time, our boss has other plans. She may have been swooped away in the dark, but don't sweat it. Her dudes are going to save her. And we have our eyes set firm on this week's boss, the department store spook. Last time, we were left in the middle of the desert, empty-handed and exhausted. But start your trip back to Foresight, and your hard work will pay off. Once you're about halfway across the bridge, you'll be stopped by George, who will give you a diamond for your troubles. Everyone calls the mine a gold mine, but clearly it's been mislabeled. Take that diamond back to the foresight and without hesitation, march right up to the theater manager. Get nice and close and present her with the unimaginably valuable diamond, and she will consider it as payment and tear up the band's contract. Head back to the theater and watch one more performance of The Runaway Five. This time they have a guest act, Venus, who helps bid them farewell. After the show, you're good to move on to your next dungeon, though you won't think it is at first glance. Unlike the first time you arrived at Foresight, the department store is now open again, and it's the most jam-packed store we've seen. It consists of four levels and pretty much any item you'll need. Here's a quick rundown of what to buy. And note that before your shopping spree, it's a good idea to call Escargo Express to take any unnecessary items out of your inventory. If you plan to buy everything you quote-unquote need, I suggest taking out about 10 grand from the ATM. The woman at the counter on the main floor sells show tickets to the Venus shows. You can also get them at the front counter at the top left topola theater, so don't sweat it here. Moving to the second floor, you'll find a burger shop, food shop, food cart, and an arms dealer. If you want to grab some protein shakes or picnic lunches as an alternative to lifing up, go for it. But most importantly, visit the arms dealer in the far room and make sure to stock Jeff up with big bottle rockets. I'd say four or five if you can carry them. These are pivotal against the next boss process. Traveling to the third floor, you'll find the shop and tool stores. At the tool shop, you're going to drop a good amount of coin. If you want to save your money, don't buy anything for Paula. Like I briefly mentioned earlier, she won't be around for a while, so no use to waste your money if you don't have it. Get everyone gold bracelets and equip Paula with a chef's frying pan, if you got the funds. Head to the top floor. On the fourth floor, you'll have toys and sports shop. Equip everyone with a coin of defense and tie Paula's hair up with a defense ribbon. Again, only if you have spare funds. I also avoid the yo-yos in this game. They always seem to miss when I need them the most. But if it works for you, I don't want to discourage you. I just don't think the extra firepower is really worth it. Now your shopping is all done. You can check out the boss's office if you'd like and get a view of the battlefield. Just don't forget to sit in his chair. You get one pass to the department store, so make sure you've made all your purchases before heading back down. Make sure you give either Ness or Jeff Franklin badge if you don't have it already. Once you reach the ground floor and walk past the first tree, the lights will suddenly cut out and a blur will steal our sweet, sweet Paula. A message comes over the speakers that you have to get back to the fourth floor if you ever want to see your friend again. So starts phase one of getting her back. Please don't go in all gung-ho. Some of the toughest enemy in the entire game reside in this department store. They hit hard, and they are everywhere. You'll find the Musica, which is the guitar thing. It has nearly 300 hit points and loves to use Thunder Beta. This is where the Franklin Badge will come in handy. Next are the Mystical Records. They're a pain because they can heal each other. And the final enemy that you'll see is a scalding cup of coffee. It spills hot coffee on you and takes effect on all the party members, so they suck. If you get into the battle with more than one enemy, utilize a big bottle rocket. The last thing you need is to lose a teammate and have to go outside to heal, because your trip to the boss will be even farther. Enemies appear in little packages and are fast, but they move in straight lines, so there's a ways of evading them. It does take some skill and luck, but it's a good way to avoid some battles. Another bummer you'll face are the escalators. Unlike doors, you don't have the option to quickly despawn enemies. You are at the mercy of whatever is spawned on the way up. Utilize their travel paths at this point, or accept your fate. Upon reaching the fourth floor and successfully reaching the boss room, you've done all the heavy lifting. That is, if you still have a couple big bottle rockets. Confidently walk right up to the department store spook, and make sure to talk to him from the side so you can see this ridiculous profile, and you're ready to meet your foe. The department store spook. The department store spook was sent to ally Mr. Montatoli from Gygus himself. They can clearly see that Paula is the one true threat to the universe, so it's a good strategy to take her. In the department store spook's pre-battle monologue, it nearly states that Ness and Jeff will burn in hell, but instead goes on to say that they'll go to heaven. It's a funny little writing thing. He has 610 hit points and an oodle of PP. His entire moveset are PSI moves. His most common attack is Freeze Alpha, but it, he also knows Fire Alpha, Life Up Alpha, Brain Shock Alpha, and Magnet Omega. He is a hard hitter, but will fall quickly if you use two big bottle rockets on him. Ness can choose to use his highest level rockin' or save his PP for healing. Luckily, he fights alone, but he can life up himself, so be aware of that, and he might undo some of your hard work. Make sure you keep your health above 100 hit points as best as you can. With a little patience and a couple rockets, he will go down. 
Once he's defeated, he reveals that Paul is being held in the Montoli building, confident that his master Gygus will avenge his death. His death turns the lights back on in the department store, and the party can go buy items once again. And there you have it, another boss bossed by the best. Your little team of guys are just starting their bonding experience, but you'll have plenty of time to get to know each other, because very soon we are slipping between mental dimensions and fighting a really heavy hitter, an idol of the ages, a real powerhouse. I'm talking the Manny Manny statue. See you next week. Thanks again for watching through to the end. Daggone am I having fun making these. Now I hate to give homework, but if you want to get a jump on next week's boss, click the clip on the right side and learn all about the Manny Manny statue and how pivotal he is in the game. You can click on the left and it'll take you to the whole boss playlist. Later days.